Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Anfield Index podcast. I am, as usual, podcasting to you from my field here in beautiful rural Ireland, in which I've spent the afternoon planting things. So I'm all wholesome and that. And I'm joined this afternoon for episode 340. I knew that myself and definitely did not need Lisa Marie to tell me off the Anfield Index podcast. I'm joined, of course, by... Lisa Marie Hannan and Guy Drinkle, both of whom you'll hear from quite soon. But as per usual, uh, drama queen that I am, I'm going to hog the beginning um, because I want to play you a little clip that I heard earlier on. I thought you might get some fun out of. Um, to give the credit, it seems to be a crew called Channel B. Um, on YouTube, and it kind of came up. So randomly um on a feed that i was having a look at and basically the setup here is classic star trek but with cockneys uh so that's what you're getting now for the next little while here so here we go cockney star trek with all the original cast here we go Stardate 508.395. The moment the crew of the Millennium Enterprise have dreaded is upon them. Their most feared enemy, the Klingons, have begun an invasion of the Federation. And this time, there may be no stopping them. All right, boys, listen up. Word is it's kicking off big time. We're going to have a tear up with the Klingons. Klingons? They're naughty. They are proper naughty, Jim. Yeah, I know, they're proper naughty, moody geezers, but don't worry, right? I've sent Bones down there, early bells, have a bit of a nose around. Let's keep his minces peeled in case he comes on top. Bones, you there, son? Yeah, I'm here, Jim. Yeah, how's the family? Yeah, sweet, as nice as it goes, son. Uh, what's the script? To be fair, ain't a lot happening as it goes. What, no Klingons? No. No Klingons? You're having a turkey, son? No, mate. You ain't mugging us off, are you, Bones? Nah, straight up. I ain't popped a single Klingon boat. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. This is a liberty. This is a liberty. They're off, ain't they? We've been mugged off by the Klingons. They mugs. They've mugged us right off. Are you going to have that, Jim? What do you think? Do you think I'm going to have that? Do you think I'm going to have that off them mugs? Bones, get yourself back up here, son. I tell you what. <laughs> this is going to get up and naughty. <laughs> Fantastic. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just that actually requires no follow-up comment. I'll just leave that hanging in the air. Uh, Lisa Marie, I, I understand that following Cockney Star Trek is probably not a thing you ever envisaged will happen in your life, and yet here we are. Uh, so uh, You know, my as... life has taken all kinds of twists and turns here since I uh, <laughs> yeah, started podcasting with you, Trevor. <laughs> Yes, yes. I can only apologise, uh, and at the same time, at the same time, you 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 have kept turning up. So I, I assume it's not all bad. Uh, no, so with not. that in with that in mind, um, do you have any opening thought for us this week, or how uh, how are things with you generally? Well, you know, here's the thing. I don't know if you all are aware, but here in the South, we don't have four seasons. We have twelve, and um, the last couple of weeks, we've been in false fall, but we are kicking back into second summer right now. Um, as our temperatures are supposed to top 30 for the next couple of days. Um, so yeah, so just, just to share with you just a little bit, I mean, you know, so if you start at the beginning, you've got winter, you have full spring, then you have second winter, 
Then you have spring of deception, which is where things start to bloom and you think it's going to be spring, (laughs) but then it gets cold again. So then there's your third winter. And then we have what we call the pollening, you know, where (laughs) everything is just, you know, no one can breathe. Um, And then it's actual spring, which usually lasts, by the way, for a week. Um, Then you go into summer. And then there's my favorite, Hell's Front Porch. Then the false (laughs) fall, which we've experienced the last couple of weeks. And then, yeah, this week we're into second summer, which, please God, will be shortly followed by actual fall, which hopefully will last longer than two weeks. There are years where you get second summer, like through the end of October, and then you get a week of fall, like the beginning of November. You just never know. I mean, we like to keep things interesting down here. So, um, but yeah, but I just thought I'd, I'd share that as just a little um, cultural education um, for everyone listening. But yes, right now we are, we are in um, second summer and uh, I, do love I hate it. The, I do look, I love the idea of the pollening, I have to say, uh, as, yes. a, yeah, as that's an, one of my an allergy too. sufferer. But, but, but I, I have to ask, cause you, you haven't really outlined it there. When you get into winter proper, do you mm-hmm. actually get anything resembling cold weather? Yes, we can. We can. Oh, absolutely. I mean, heck, we had snow last year. In the last couple of years, we've actually had snow. I do remember um, that. Yeah. yeah. And it can yeah. get, I mean, it can't, you know, and sometimes it can just get really cold and we just don't have snow. I mean, our temperatures can get generally, you know, and it, it and sometimes it's generally January, February um, is, is if we're going to get really cold weather, that's, that's usually when it is. But, um, but yeah, but no, it can't, but there are years where, yeah, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't necessarily seem like proper winter. First, you know, my definition of winter and someone who lives in, say, I don't know, Michigan might have a completely different definition of winter. But but yes, but we do truly get the four seasons. It's just some of them are shorter than others. Yeah. Yeah. I just define seasons by whether I'm wearing my shorts or not. The uh, correct and that, <laughs> I, I, you know, that's basically. Yeah, but are you one of those people that will wear them like year round when it's super cold? I do like I do like to wear shorts, but but I'm not like Irish young lads who have taken to wearing shorts with padded North Face jackets in December. <laughs> I, I that as a trend, I I I can't fully get behind. But yeah, I, w- I wear shorts around the house and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Although judging by what we're being told this year, uh, I'll be wearing them over my trousers in order to save on heating bills. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, You heard the dulcet tones of Guy Drinkle piping in there for a second or two. How are you, my friend? Uh, Do you have a starter for us this week? Well, I do, but before we get on to that, that just reminds your your, uh, Cockney Star Trek just reminded me of something that will probably be known to only local people to me. Someone created Teesside Tin Tin up here, and it is fantastic. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because again a local lad around here did uh, Mead and Cavan Postman Pat and again it's just Postman Pat the actual animated Postman Pat the sort of you know whatever it is claymation thing whatever it is with a voiceover and it's glorious and yes. I assume this is actual Tintin footage oh, God, yes. but with voice yes oh. And if, well, if you're I'm not familiar with the t- if, yeah, if you're not familiar with the Teesside accent, it's in between mine and Geordie, but harsher. If you've heard yes. Jonathan Jonathan Woodgate or Stuart Downing, that that's Teesside, I think. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what 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 would you? How would you uh, describe uh, uh, someone whose voice would be known to a lot of people and has been heard in this podcast before? Uh, Bob Mortimer. Bob's a little bit soft. It, it, He's softly spoken. It's not yeah. a harsh Teesside accent, but he is he is a, a, a Borough fan and, and, and very much talks about them all the time. I, I, I assume... He is from, yeah, it's, he's it's, from Teesside, yeah. It's representative, is it? Is it um, not... His is quite soft. It can, I think it's the same with every accent. It can, it can range quite... His is quite soft, but he's probably... I'm guessing he's lived out the area for a little while because, well... There's no work. There's no TV work up in the northeast. Although yeah, I think, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, what's his mate? What's his co-host mate called? I can't remember the bloody name. 
Oh, you mean you mean back in the day, Vic Reeves? Or? Vic Reeves, yeah. He, I think he still lives up. I think he lives in Darlington. I think so. Maybe, maybe and he get, he's he's yeah he's getting plenty of work in his old age. Yeah. Is Vic uh, knocking around doing stuff, uh, hosting gigs and stuff like that with long hair and a beard? I did. I, I the reason I ask is I'm I'm always curious about slang terms, guy. Mm. Sorry to take sorry no, to take no, care it's of fine. Time. The film can but wait. It, it's would, right. Yeah, exactly. It's not going anywhere. Do, do you have? Do you have common a lot of commonality with Geordies? Uh, like, would would people from Sunderland, Middlesbrough, Newcastle have a lot of crossover there in the uh, in the terminology, and 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 or is that how you tell the difference? Um, I think it's it's tough because I think there's like little sayings. Like, I think now then is like I don't know if that's more a northern thing rather than a northeast thing, but I'd probably say. It mixes in a bit with Yorkshire, but calling people like Doyles, I think that's kind of northeasty. I, I love um, that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's northeast because you learned it from Bob Mortimer with that um, thing, didn't it? His, his, his podcast thing. Podcast, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think you can just tell because Geordie's quite. How do you word? I was going to say poetic, but it's not. It's not. It's like. It's like le- less harsh, softer northeast accent, Mackham. Macam, you can just tell by the aggressiveness because we've all heard John Henson and John Pickford make noises. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whereas T, I think T side's kind of like a mix of all of them, and it can range a bit more. But they can all yeah. be like very harsh. But yeah, I think in terms of northeast like slang, I think now then is probably the most common one. But pe- when I call people Doyle, they all <laughs> most of them, like some people thought I was referring to Ian Doyle, the journalist, when I kept saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I say that, it's like, oh yeah. No, no, it's like whenever you see his match, it's like Doyle's a Doyle and stuff like that. So yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So so anyway, I've I've taken you off track. You were about to bring us into another bit of cinematic history here. I was indeed. So last week we had Sylvester Stallone. <clears throat> this week we have Sylvester Stallone. But he's partnered, oh, he's partnered with two of the next icons of action films, Fifty Cent and Dave Bautista. Oh, and this oh, what is, even is this? <laughs> this is Escape Plan Three: The Extractors. Oh yes, it's the third one. Yes. Oh, hang on! Didn't the first one have him and Arnie? Yes, I think ah. Arnie learned. I think Yanni may have learned taste, <laughs> whereas <laughs> Sylvester maybe hasn't. Uh, so, so, so now Stallone has got the Expendables recent action movie franchise, yeah. and this is now a franchise. It's on number three. Imagine. So, this, this and how recent is this? Dave Bautista is a pretty huge star now. Twenty nineteen. This is. Huh. Oh, Which okay. is that's post um, uh, Guardians and all that, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Huh, okay. It's got a 4.48, uh, and so he doesn't want it to be, but, you know. I need you to tell us something about it, then. So, description. I don't even think the sentence makes sense, but I think that adds to the occasion. <clears throat> After security expert Ray Breslin, which is Sylvester, of course, is hired to rescue the kidnapped daughter of a Hong Tong... Hong Tong? Hong Kong tech mogul... mogul <laughs> I can't read. From a formidable <laughs> Latvian prison... Breslin's girlfriend is also captured. Just for them layers. Just for them layers. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That I'm mean, I'm already hooked, you know. Yeah. Uh I'm already and the idea, of course, uh, what what how was he described um there as a as, was he security or tech security expert? What's what's the so what is... I, I've only seen the first one. But from that premise, he goes into prisons and tries to escape as a test. So and then in the first one he rescues Arnie and that that becomes the crack. So yeah, I think he gets hired to go into prisons and try and break out. But in the first one he's hired by Arnie who's in prison. Then he breaks Arnie out. So I'm guessing it's the similar premise here, but it doesn't have Arnold Schwarzenegger in for people to care about. So I'm guessing that's why it's dreadful. Yes, uh, I I I still kind of want to see this though. Oh, of course. It, it sounds yeah. awful, but yeah. I have I, I have reloaded a... a blog that I used to when I used to do this quite frequently, and we have some rules, some viewer quotes, and what we learned. <clears throat> so rules. Here we go. Product placement. 
Zhang, in quotes, which, yeah. Wong, in quotes. I I, I just want to watch this fil- film. Chine, in quotes. Stallone goes full Rambo. And viewer quotes. I'm guessing there's a character called Wong. You messed with the Wong guy about ten times. So, I, I, whoever writes this blog, I feel like he should be my friend. And, and what we learned from this film is, bodyguards don't need to be armed, only Ray Breslin, of course. Eighty-year-old Sly Stallone is still jacked and can kill people with his bare hands. Yes, of course. And what we learned, not to watch a fourth escape plan if they decide to make one. Which, I'm in. I'm in for this film. I am, I may go and look it up immediately because I wanted to watch something daft later on. I'm looking up Sylvester Sloan to see what age he is because I know he's not actually 80, is he? What age is he? Hang on a second. Born in 1940. Oh, holy shit. He's 76. Yeah, he's getting right on there. I, I, okay. saw, I saw an interview with him. After, it was on the BBC. It must have been like the 80s. It must have been the 80s. And it was on about him, him being like, writing the script for uh, for Rocky and stuff like that. And he seemed, like, really well-spoken and stuff like that and have a real hunger to obviously do that film, which was his big break. But <laughs> now he's pumping out this crap, and I love it. You see, that's the thing. When he started off, he had a lot of artistic cred off the back mm. of the room. Writing, um, off the back of the writing credit, uh, at least a couple of the screenplays was 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 Stallone, um, and then you know he has this. Uh, then he gets into then he has eight, a really early eighties, eighty one, eighty two. The the first of the Rambo's came out, and that's a whole thing. But the real golden era. Uh, Rocky slide. three and four, please. You must be saying. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm taking Rocky out of the loop. I'm taking First Blood out oh. of the loop, and all the Rambo ones. But the, the real sort of, just Sylvester Stallone mincing about doing Sylvester Stallone things. I don't know if people remember Cobra, Tango and Cash, Cliffhanger, Demolition Man, mm. The Specialist, all of these. And again, they're all of comparatively. Uh, low, uh, uh, you know, status in terms of of movies, but he is entertaining. And I just watched Copland recently, where he was brilliant. Um, Judge you know, Dredd is dreadfully amazing as well, and that is that oh, is pu- that is pun intended as well. I, I'm, you see, I'm a fan of the comic book, so I was. Have you watched the Carl Urban horrified. one? That's tremendous. Yeah, that is fantastic. That one. I think that's actually tremendous. Yeah. Uh, uh, but 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 my God! Um, <laughs> oh, Sly is taking it is 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 terrifying. Anyway, before we turn into a completely film podcast, let's get back to our stated purpose here, which is to be a show about the Reds. And I have one question for you. I think I know how guys going to go, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip back to you on this, Lisa Marie, because. It's a different, it's a completely different setup for you because uh, it can be tough to get to see matches depending on their timing anyway. Um, when you're faced with a spell without the Reds playing, which has been enforced through two games being cancelled because of all the um, uh, Royal Hoo Ha and then a fortnight international break. So I think somebody did the sums on it 17 days without the Reds or something like that. Um, when you heard that and you were aware of that and the 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 second of the two Liverpool games, uh, the, the Chelsea game was was, was uh, confirmed as cancelled, were you, you were confronted with, with a simple question, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Um, what, what way did you find yourself landing? Were you kind of happy enough that maybe it was okay to take a break now? Or considering it's a season that's going to be split you know, sort of dramatically in two, um, was that even a consideration? What was your take on the good or bad thing? Well, like the season, I was a little bit split <laughs> in how I felt yes. about it. Um, on one hand, I I really did think it was a good thing. Although, um, you know, with the, with the Graham Potter appointment kind of falling in there too, I was like, oh, this might be a good time to play Chelsea because – you know, things are in flux. Um, so, so that, that might've been to our advantage. Um, but on the other hand, you know, 
it just maybe gives us that chance for the players that are still out on injury to to maybe be back. Um, and, you know, I mean, I know some of them, of course, are going off, um, you know, to play for their for their international teams, too. But but it didn't feel like it was going to be a very, um, you know, high tempo international break. You know, sometimes those international breaks, you know, they're playing a crazy amount of, you know, they're trying to cram a crazy amount of games games into into the break time so it wasn't it isn't necessarily good for our players I, and I haven't paid super close attention as to what is or isn't going on um as far as the international teams you know in this next couple of weeks but but I think overall I'm falling on the side of it being a good thing yeah I I, I totally get where you come from in terms of the mixed feelings I really do um from a football point of view, I was talking to Jan about this during the week. I think it's it's a very much a mixed bag. You know, sometimes it's nice if things have been a bit shitty to get a break and reset and all that. But when you're going to have your players taken away from you to the four corners of the earth anyway, that doesn't really count. Uh, I think, like you, I'd have been interested to play at, at Chelsea as they're settling in under their new gaffer as opposed to... Uh, him being a little bit more established uh, so for that reason I think I would have been very very happy to play the Chelsea game on the back of a very good performance in our last one yes but, yes and and that after our after our game on Tuesday, Tuesday right when we played Ajax um, you know since we did play so much better you know I I was kind of wishing we were playing again just to see if we could kind of build up some rhythm um, that we have been sorely lacking so far this season. So I think I felt less on the good side of things after we had played on Tuesday, you know, going in, you know, going into that game and just the way we had all, you know, been talking when we were, you know, on the last podcast and everything, it was just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm good until we don't, you know, we can play January. That works. That's fine. Um, not really, but so, yeah. So I think coming off of the win on Tuesday, I was leaning more toward the, no, maybe it's not as good of a thing as, as I initially thought. Yeah. I mean, there, there you go. It's that very much. It's, 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 it's a mixed bag and I can relate to all of it. Guy to take you on on this one. I mean, uh, the part of me that was wanting to play again was also very much aware that that's entirely down to Tiago. Uh, mm. And I don't want to sound simplistic or oversimplistic, but it was entirely down to Tiago. And as a result, I, that, that's that's a very mixed bag mentally for me because I don't like that dependence that we have on one player. I love watching him. I wish he could play for us all the time. But, you know, there's a fear that comes attached to the fact that he's, he's not necessarily the most robust of characters. Now, when he's playing and he's doing his thing on the park, you would think he was made out of titanium because he doesn't hold back in any challenges. He wins all these aerial duels. He's clearly a, a, a force of nature on the park in ways that people don't actually expect, apart altogether from the metronomic quality, the silky passes, all the rest of it. He's actually really he's a hard bastard as well. Uh, but the dependence on him leaves me very nervous. And I, 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 I guess I'm hoping that we come up with a way of playing that isn't necessarily going to be so reliant on his presence. And I'm wondering, will the couple of weeks give Klopp a chance to tinker or to think more to the point? Where, where were you dropping in terms of all of this uh, layoff business? Um, before the Ajax game, I never wanted to see football ever again. Um, so yeah, I, was, I did pick up on <laughs> yes, that, actually. <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm happy again now, people. It's fine. Um, oh, my. <laughs> yeah. But now that we've won a game and Thiago's back, I, I miss football already because the international break is horrid and I hate it and I don't get it because we're already compact in the season. Let's play the Nations League. Thanks, UEFA. Um, but what you what you said there, I think, is correct. I'm looking forward to football because Thiago's available. If he wasn't available, yeah. I would be dreading... Like, Chelsea, I don't care if Graham Potter was one day in the job or two weeks in the job, which I think he would have been... I would have been crapping myself because we would have had James Milner against Kante is always fit for us. He could have literally zero limbs and he'd be fit for us somehow. So it'd be him, Kovacic, and well, probably Jorginho. But it just it's just not a match for what we would have played in that game. 
But it's, we, obviously Thiago is a fit. If Thiago's fit, I want to play every game possible. Because there's no real rhyme or reason why he gets injured, that's the thing. If you Obviously, if you overplay him, it'll up, up the chances of him getting injured. But like he's pulling up in the warm-up before games and stuff like that. So whilst he's fit, I just want to play. So I'm. it's kind of annoyed me that the breaks came whilst he's got back to fitness because he could literally injure himself walking down the stairs at home. So it doesn't really make a difference if we're playing football or not with him and he's obviously not gone to Spain, Spain duty, so I want to know who the hell plays in midfield for Spain. Uh, but, yeah. But that's okay. Oh, it's good. He's it's not good having to play for Spain yeah. yet. Yeah, it's good for us. It's, good for, it's brilliant for, good us, for us. It's, yeah. it's interesting for Spain. Like, what the hell? Um... But I suppose the break's good because we may, we may, I think Klopp said Naby might be back in October, so maybe they've had a makeup smooching session. Um, or he actually was injured, who knows? I think my theory is more likely. Um, who else has been injured? Uh, Ebu might be coming back, but Matt is well, fantastic. Curtis Jones. Yeah. No, I'm not excited about that. No. <laughs> um, you asked who was injured, not who you were excited about. Well, that's true. Ramsey might exist after this international break, so maybe we can rotate Trent. I doubt it. I, I doubt it. I, 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 he's I just in it's... the Matrix, that kid, isn't he? Yeah, he's a hundred percent. He's some sort yeah. of he's some sort of stereotypical Scottish-looking hologram mm. that just uh, we signed uh, for reasons. I, I don't understand what's going on uh, there with that. And and, and I, I fully get where you're going with it, uh, with the point you're making there. And I think if, we, if, if we're lucky enough that Thiago gets the run until the season half season awesome, break yeah. uh, of, of, of fitness, then maybe if, if we get that much out of him, that'll be all right. But I will tell you this. Uh, unless in the interim between now and then um, Arthur Mello plays a couple of games and proves to be the kind of uh, spot that our recruitment team have done on a regular basis, um, we better be getting busy with recruitment in January if we have any ambitions uh, for the second half of the season for that. And I mean midfield recruitment. Um mm-hmm. You know, with the time now to plan for it and to go and pinch somebody and maybe some lad whose team have been dumped out of the Champions League or something. I, I, let's let's hope that's on the cards at least, because uh, it's it's a shit show and it's a self imposed one. And 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 I think an awful lot of the lads who are sanctimoniously uh, crowing about squad depth maybe maybe have had a second thought. And 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 I I love the place it was coming from with a lot, an awful lot of those guys. It was like just a place of faith and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm getting cynical on my old age, on my well, old age, but I, uh, I don't have, know how much of that faith is merited. I, I think it is nice to have. I don't want to say blind faith. I think it is nice to have faith in some players. Like Milner might be a bit of an extreme case, but probably Henderson because I think he has much more use than Milner. But the harsh reality is our best midfield is currently Fabinho, who's a bit out of form, but he's still pretty good. Thiago, who can't stay fit more than three games, and a 12-year-old winger. So Watch it. <laughs> I didn't say anything bad. I said he's 12 and he's a winger, which is true. <laughs> but the harsh reality just, is that, that is our just, best midfield. Just keeping you in line there, guy. Yeah. Just keep hey, line. use my Twitter name, which is more than being a son. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I even had his hair cut for a little while, so that's one nil to me. Um, which one? Hang on, which, t- hang on, hang on. Wh- which of his awful haircuts? The top have? knot. Ah, oh, you, you can see in my Skype. Did. Look at my Skype pic. Yes, I know, I know, yes. I know. But <laughs> I think to be, to be fair, to be fair, that's a, a damn sight better than what I recall. Uh, young Elliot was sporting, but yeah, you know. It kind of suits you, man. I have to say, it's uh, gone now. It's gone now. Don't worry, it's gone now. Have you been that off in, yeah. in in favor of a nice short back and sides again? No, it's almost my hair's a bit of a mess. It's almost Jack Grealishy, but not in like that twatish way. Oh, do you have the Allison? <laughs> yes, let's go with Allison because he's a handsome bastard. No, I didn't say Allison. I said you have no, the no, Allison. You've, man, no, like, you've, no, 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 you've said it now. Let's go, Allison. <laughs> Yeah, he definitely said Alison. Yeah, that's Alison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, 
I can just, I can just, I, I presume if you, if you've got a bit greenish, does that mean you've got like a, a no, shave I, under? I thought you were going to say, do I have a headband? No, not a prick. <laughs> um, <laughs> cat, I don't really go that short because I went to the Turkish barber once and he tried to scalp me. So now I just go to a normal barber. So yeah, yeah. 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 That, that happened to me actually. I tried. I tried to get my first ever haircut where I, tr- I I got the guy to go really tight at the sides, and he did actually fuck it. Yeah. And uh, as a result, I got a, a zero all over. It was my first ever shaved head thing. This is actually back when I had like a, a total uh, coverage, and uh, I liked it so much I kept it. Uh, so I've even before I needed to be, I've always been sort of uh, shorn of all. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Like it, it was, it was a voluntary thing before. I, it, it's absolutely not voluntary now. If I was to try and concentrate really hard, it certainly wouldn't grow back in one or two places. So <laughs> there's no point in talking about it as I think <laughs> it was real. Uh, I, I need to, I need to move on to a second football topic uh, to justify our existence here, guys. And we said that we would talk about a couple of things uh reds related and the second thing i wanted to ask you about was uh in relation to the game that we just saw i think we've kind of talked about it now i don't so so i don't want to do this to death so i'll just get a sentence or two from you in terms of how you're feeling i think i know what it's going i think we've answered the question already i think it's tiago dependent but i i'd asked you the question do you reckon we've turned a corner or no uh in terms of performances and this season has been so I don't know if it's appropriate to say this or not but schizophrenic is the word that comes to mind certainly it's been a season of like uh vast alterations in 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 performances within games and from game to game so I wonder with all that in mind is the return of of Thiago the thing for you and is it Thiago dependent any confidence you have that we've turned the corner Lisa Marie yeah, unfortunately, I think it is. Um, and and I hate, and I almost hate to say it because it's like, how can our, how can our game rely so much on one player when we have so many good players, you know, across, across the board, but how can the way we play as a team be so reliant on one person? I mean, how, 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 I don't know how that's happened. Um <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, but you know what? I would also like to say, I thought having Jada in the front three to start off, I thought we were seeing better link up play and everything across the front line. Um, this, you know, in this last game as well, which which I thought was also encouraging. Yeah. That's a big deal, right? For him to come back to some sort of form is a big deal. For him to have a part with his assist for Mo's goal, uh, I thought I agree with you completely. I thought he looked sharp. I think that's massive. So you've got now two people back in the loop there who look like they're going to have a positive impact. That's great. Uh, and you know, God, you and mentioned that, earlier. I mean, not to so, not to steal all the <laughs> all the stories, but having Joel back too. Um, oh. My- Ma- massive. I mean, you know, realistically speaking, he is first choice partner for Virgil. I was going to mention Ibu Kanate to, to you, Guy, here. Mm-hmm. Um, but Lisa Marie's brought up Joel Matip. And apart altogether from the fact that, like, I think everybody just loves Joel anyway, <laughs> he's objectively fantastic. You know, he's just objectively very, very good. You can count the amount of bad games Joel Matip has had for us on the same amount of fingers now as you can count the amount of bad games Virgil van Dijk has had for us. That's an interesting thing to be able to say. And I think it's quite true over the last couple of calendar years. So he's a very high level performer. Um, And so even that in and of itself, and it's not to denigrate Joe Gomez at all, because I thought he was very good in at least one or two of the games that he played. Um, but you just feel a little bit, you can breathe a little bit easier uh, with with Joel there. So all in all there, there's a, a, a sort of a, a move back towards a, a Liverpool side that we're far more familiar with the look of. And if we do manage to keep it that there's a little bit of depth there behind Harvey, if Harvey isn't doing necessarily all the things we need him to do 
in his overall game. Uh, and, you know, we might be able to spell out Fab or Thiago for the likes of uh, a, a, a James Miller for 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the game. I guess things are starting to look a bit more regular and normal and probably hope should accompany that, right? You had me till that last sentence, fucking hell. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's a no for me on the sub appearances. Just let him be a coach, Jenny. Just let him be a coach, but he can just train with the lads. You, you've you've been you've been fully Hendrick yeah. on this. Yeah, you, you, no, you no longer want to see I James just, Miller having. Yeah, I know. He just, I, if Dave he's has not his up way, to speed just, with tired lads anymore. He can't go on. <laughs> I know. And look, I mean, it's. Uh, I I I actually I worry about that. I wonder if yeah. the falling off. Is, has 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 just happened now and mm. it's it's done. I do worry about that. Um, so maybe it was a bad example, but maybe yeah. we'll have yeah. the likes of of a Kader back or a Jones back or a ah, so maybe exist. between. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, who 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 the hell knows? Apparently, he's doing shuttle runs every single day uh, when all the lads are at home having cake. So mm-hmm. maybe. Our, Arthur Mello is going to be great when we I see him I think he next. played, I thought I saw something that he played for the under-21 team yesterday. I think he played 90 wins, I think. Did himself and who else? Somebody, one of the other senior uh, players. Uh, yeah, Nat Phillips. And there was Phillips. somebody else. Um, yeah, the, Jay Spinger. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Spinger. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who the other one was, but I know those two did. I Look, I mean... I'm I'm getting from you, Guy, that overall you've had just one too many slaps in the face this year to be uh, saying anything too optimistic about the remainder of the season. Is that correct? Yeah, kind. Well, it's it's weird because I think you mentioned turning the corner there. I think we've turned the wheel, but unfortunately we're driving like a fucking cargo ship or something like that, so it doesn't really turn. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's a, it's a weird one. But I think... You mentioned optimism for the rest of the season, and it kind of leads on to our next topic because I know you want to talk a bit about Haaland being a, a big Frankenstein prick. Um, but I still feel like we're the only team who could stop City. Maybe not by us beating them in the league, but I feel like in a one-off game we can still beat them. Because we've shown that it, it, it's only it's only the um, charity shield, but I still think we're the only team on their level. Maybe we won't have the consistency to challenge them in the league, but I think we're still the only one who can reach that level. And as you say, if we can keep Thiago fit till the break and then we sign someone or Naby club make up, then them two can dovetail like they did last se- at the end of last season. That'd be great. Um, maybe Arta gets back to his Barcelona levels or his um, Gremio levels, I think that's where he's from, in, in Brazil. Then even more great. But... It's just, there's still so many question marks about us, whereas you look at City, it's like, oh no, Haaland's only had five touches, but he scored seven goals. Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> whereas we're like, Darwin yeah. Nunes will have to take six months of training to be able to press for us properly. It's like, eh, really? Just look at the, I know it's not, I know there's different levels and he's going to be the best player in the world soon enough, nearly in the conversation already, but... Yeah, it's just I don't know. It it does feel like we've kind of wasted a year already, but I think there's still levels to come from us. But I feel like the levels will come too late. If that makes sense. Oh, it does. It does. Uh, and 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 it's an understandable feeling indeed. Uh, and I think an awful lot of people will share it with you. I I I always have the foolish uh, inclination towards optimism till it's no longer possible and for that reason I'm, I'm still hopeful that something like the Champions League yeah. where that kind of level of consistency you're talking about might offer us a chance to do something spectacular and and worthy of, of this team uh, and this squad and this era um, and so like, like I said on several shows I've built it up way too much at this point because uh, it got off to such a shit start that uh that 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 left me quite shook as well there's an awful lot of ifs ands and buts but what does seem to be quite predictable and consistently summary is that as guy sort of has alluded to if we're going to win anything it will be at the expense of 
what was already the most expensively assembled squad uh, in history and a wonderful football team. Um, I said that, and I'm not sure if you could hear my teeth being gritted, uh, but they were. <laughs> Uh, and a wonderful football manager and I am now quietly puking into a bucket as I say that um, and I, you, you have to give them their their their, their credit I mean, they're, they are an awesome machine of a team and now of course they've added the, the cheat code that is Haaland uh, who looks exactly like what I thought he would look like and I think most people um, when they thought of him coming to the Premier League, thought he would do damage. I, when when it was a possibility that we could have gotten him, I thought, well, if, if we sign Haaland, that's it. We will win everything for ten years, uh, because I I fully in my bones expected that he'd do what he's doing. I don't think there's any danger he'll stop. The only issue around that kid is he's had a few injuries, but he also is a, a, a giant brute of a lad, so I'm sure he'll be fine. And maybe that was just an early in his life thing. Um, so when you see that now and the awesome nature of what they have become uh, added to by, you know, a lad who looks like, you know, a cross between some sort of, AI, by that I mean artificial He looks like a super villain. He looks like some sort of... <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, you, do you remember? You, you, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a mo- here's a movie from our era, Lisa Marie. You remember uh, 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 Highlander? Yes. Do you, do you remember the Kurgan? Yeah. He looks like the Kurgan. Thank Go back you. and have a look. That's, That's it. What he looks I've, been like. yeah. to, I've been trying he lo- to... He looks, he looks like the Kurgan. I, I, and, I mean, obviously not exactly, but he's got that go about him where it's just like, oh, you are a scary bastard. And, you know, he's obviously he's obviously got that threat to him um, against everything. Now, There's you see things about him that isn't quite. I mean, have we confirmed that he's human? I'm just asking. That's my point. Because That's my point. Right there. Well, we have actually I did see a very. I saw a heartwarming clip today where Manchester City lads were firing their training tops at their uh, beleaguered assistant as he's trying to gather them up. I, I, it infuriated me because I've seen that kind of shit behavior at all sorts of levels in football. And I always, always go out of my way to pick up anyone I see doing that because it's just such shitbag behavior. But in the middle of all that, Erling walks over with his, folds it up and puts it in your man's hands. And I'm thinking... Oh no, is he a bit sound as well? Oh, oh no, no. That's, yeah. that, that's not working for me because I want to just hate him. No, <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> it, it would be like if, if someone told you if someone told you Harry Kane was really sound, you'd be like, shit. <laughs> yeah, that would bother me. <laughs> yeah. Although I'm telling so, you what, Harry Kane is in second place now on my Tottenham dislike scale. Now that Richarlison's over there, because. I oh, do well, not like him, but, yeah. but we'll save that conversation okay. for when we're playing Tottenham. Um, anyway, what was your question in so, there, so Trev? The, the, round, the roundabout question, which I never actually put to you, was like, okay. do you, do, do, there's an awful lot of people who have just gone, what's the point? Well, like, literally, what's the point? Now, they are what Carl Copping would call runners, and I, I, I'm, I, I have no time for that type of absolute, like, writing the season off. But I kind of understand it. Where, where are you in terms of thinking about that when you see the level that they can attain? Well, you know, I mean, yes, I'm with you. I, I kind of understand it. But what if we had thought that way in the 2021 season when, you know, we had dropped to whatever, you know, out of the Champions League places? Um, or what if we had not giving it a go last season, you know, till the very end, you know, I mean, I just, you know, and I, I remember saying it on this very podcast, you know, the beginning of January, when we were the points behind Man City, I said, you know what, we don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, I mean, and of course, we didn't get it. But, but what if we had just sort of sat back and coasted to the end of the season? You know, I mean, you just don't know, they could have, I just, I hate to see us give it up. And, and shelve it, you know, as a possibility this early in the season. I just, that just goes against, you know, my core beliefs in, in how to approach things. Um, so yeah, no, I don't, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm sympathetic to it. I get it. 
I, you know, you look at him and you, I, as I said, I don't think he's human. I really don't. There's just something not real about him. Um, but I just, I, I can't give up this easily. I just can't. It's not in me. <laughs> I think that's fair. Guy, <laughs> quickly to you on the same question. And you can expand that out past City if you like, because an awful lot of people now, like, I mean, you mentioned Chelsea yourself with a level of certain, a certain level of like acknowledgement of how good they can be. Obviously, a lot of these other teams are not falling away like you'd want them to either. Uh, they're hanging in there and getting good results and obviously all ahead of us. This is very frustrating in so many ways. Even and 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 here's one of the ways you can see where it's a shit thing to not have played. Um, does do, does the comparative strength of City sort of John? Is your opinion of what's possible for us this season, or like Lisa Marie, would you be leaning into the well, you know, the whole Mo Salah T-shirt? You know, never give up. I've been distracting myself because apparently Highlander's getting rebooted with Henry Cavill as the lead. So, you know, that's what I was reading there. Huh. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, I think I read that somewhere recently. Yeah, yeah. I will watch that film. Um, but anywho, football... I always watch Henry Cavill. Well, <laughs> even as a straight person, that's true. Um, <laughs> I'm distracted by Henry Cavill now. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a weird one with me because... I am a pessimistic bastard. But I still feel like we're one of the favourites for the Champions League. But at the same time, it wouldn't surprise me if we went out in the group stage. <laughs> if we get through the group stage and settle into the season, I think we'll be there at the end of the season again. That it's just, I think it's just getting across the short-term shit. And I know we played, I know we played much better against Ajax, but them doubts are still there that we've been kind of discussing. Um, but in terms of the league, I think, Arsenal the top, but it's Arsenal. Who gives a toss? Like Spurs have improved, but we we've even seen in the last couple of games. If you take if you take Kulisevsky out on the right and put someone else in there, they're unbalanced. Son had I know Son got a hat trick. Um but it's against Leicester, that doesn't count. Um he hasn't started the season too well. Um and and, and the defence isn't as good as as ours or cities, I don't think. I think the system kind of hides flaws there. So I still think it is just City or Bust, to be fair. But at the same time, if we don't sort our, stu- our, our situation out, it wouldn't surprise me if we are scrapping with... I, I think it'll be Spurs and Arsenal getting the top four because I think Chelsea probably have the best team, but Potter's a big... quite. I think Potter to... Uh, Tuchel to Potter to, is quite a... It's quite a big change in terms of many things. I think tactically they're a bit different, albeit they play three at the back. Um, and just the way he probably manages, because it's a first experience for him, so I think Chelsea may fall off a bit before probably getting stronger and a bit more exciting, to be fair to them. But yeah, I think I think there's City in terms of the league. I think Champions League's a different story, because, well, City love bottling that competition. Um, I think in the league it's City... A distance in terms of consistency, as I mentioned earlier, though I think on level we can get to that level. Then there's us on an island on our own, on an island next to City, um, and then the North London clubs are kind of fighting each other. So that's how I kind of view it. But I think ours is more perilous than City's. But it's odd at the start of the season. I was I did the prediction shows on on AI um, on AI scouted. I I thought we'd win the league. I thought we'd win it. I didn't think we. Yeah. I didn't think we'd basically fuck the midfield off. <laughs> and then I think I've mentioned this every time, but we clearly planned on Naby being part of the squad. So either Klopp falling out with him or he is actually injured. It doesn't really matter. But we clearly planned on him being part of the squad. Um, it's just mad how much it can change in a, in a space of probably a month, two months now. But even then, it still changed quite a bit in just a few weeks. Because after the Napoli game, I think everyone was like. Just get the season done with. But after the Ajax game, it's like, let's roll on. Yeah. Like I, I think I think it's there's it's the perfect storm because Trent doesn't get quite as exposed if our midfield is stronger. Our yeah. attack is more potent if our midfield is stronger. Uh our midfield gets away with it if 
Trent and the lads are a bit better at the back, our midfield gets away with it if our forwards take some of the chances they really should have taken. I'm looking at you, Mo. So it is a kind of a perfect storm. You have to be, it's it's overly simplistic to point your finger in one particular place, but they should have gotten two new midfielders. Uh, he said, pointing his finger in one particular place. But it, the knock-on effects all around the team are, are, are so obvious. You know, the, the, it's 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 a far more complex thing. It's a, the the it's a systemic thing. Um, so we do need everybody to get their shit together quite quickly, uh, and we do need a certain amount of durability in the uh, in the personnel that are currently fit. And uh, to see maybe Ibukanate returning would be good as well. Uh, mm-hmm. As well as it would be to see Darwin Nunes uh, suddenly become the player that we all want him to be, the guy who looked very much the part against City and when he came on as a sub in the first game against Fulham. Um, so look, we, 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 we'll we leave it that there's uh, certainly a, a, an amount of hope. And I have a choice for you uh, to finish the show because I had mentioned that like as our last question we'd we'd uh, a, a very general question what's what's a good album um but I, I've I've discovered in the middle of our, our conversation here today when I was looking something up on Tiago there is now a Tiago quiz on lfc.com uh Liverpool FC com, the official website uh, and I'm wondering what do you want to do the Tiago quiz instead of the uh, album question Yes. Tiago. Sure. Okay. Okay. So it, it's this is about this is about whoever shouts out the answer first. Yes. <laughs> I'll unmute yes. myself for this. There Let's are, go. There are, <laughs> <laughs> I'll unmute yourself yes. for this. So it's it's there will be four uh four multiple choice answers and you cannot answer until I have completed enunciating the final option. Otherwise you're disqualified. If you jump in, you're disqualified. So you need to listen to all four of the options and then whoever says the answer first, assuming they're correct, will uh, we'll get the star, right. the gold star. Some of these are embarrassingly tiara. simple. No tiara this time? No tiaras, no, no tiaras here. Uh, so these, some of these are embarrassingly simple. Some of them, however, will probably end up with you getting them wrong. Eleven is your possible, is your maximum mark possible. So uh, we're also keeping an individual score here as well to see who wins this quiz. First question on the Tiago Alcantara quiz from LiverpoolFC.com is nice and simple. Which international team does Thiago represent? Spain, Brazil, Italy, Germany? Spain. Oh, Lisa Marie's in. Bollocks. <laughs> Cheating. That's right. It's probably the only one I'm going to get Cheating. right. So this way I won't, I won't have a, a, you know, I won't have a zero score. <laughs> I, I was delighted by, by the pause you both left. That was great. I just thought you were doing that for a fact. Which team, question two, which team did he make his debut for? Oh, sorry, which team did he make his debut against for the Reds? Chelsea, Everton, Manchester United, Arsenal. Chelsea. Everton. Oh, Guy, Guy Driggle's in there. Oh, okay. the correct answer you waited first. so long to give it to him. I thought he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, just drawing you in. <laughs> One each. At which Spanish club did Thiago begin his senior career? Atletico Madrid, Valencia, Real Madrid, Barcelona. Barcelona. 2-1 to the Dringle. In which year did Thiago visit Anfield as an opposition player in the Champions League? 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. 2017. No. Lisa Marie, would you care to... Would you Care to hazard guess? 2018. Bollocks. I'm afraid it was the year in which we played them in the Champions League, which was 2019. Oh, good. Good. We played (laughs) Bayern Munich. Ah, yes. Okay. So we are still 2 1 to Guy, and we go to. Is this question five? One, two, three, four. Yeah, question five. What shirt does Thiago wear for the Reds? Oh, four. 
Six. Oh. See, I thought I disqualified I did... myself because I yelled it out before you gave the answer. Yeah, I, I just, I just had to get. I, I need a guy to give me the right answer. I can't I just that... give it to. Him. Yeah, I was. Kind of, I was wondering if you were still going. I thought you were trying to catch me out. Like, trying to get me disqualified. Uh, <laughs> they may try to jump the gun there because she's. I did. I disqualified myself on that one. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, with uh, one, two, three, four, five questions left, it's three one to Young Drinkle. Uh, and that was, oh, four questions left, I think. From which team did Liverpool sign Thiago? Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, Dortmund Real Madrid? Bayern Munich. Oh, I'm going to give you one each for that. So it's now at 4 2. Uh, how many appearances has he made for Liverpool so far? 72, 73, 74, 75. 73. 74? Oh, it's 4 3. It's 4 3. Ooh. 73 is the correct answer. At least Marie's That's in there. Three, three answers, three questions remain. Uh, it is a good year, damn it. Uh, <laughs> Which team did Thiago score his f- score against to record his first Liverpool goal? Was it against Newcastle United, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Southampton, or Tottenham Hotspur? Wolves. Wolves says Guy. I can tell you that's incorrect, Lisa Marie. Um, Southampton. Oh, it's all level. It's all level going into the last two. We have a potential draw in our hands, but we also have a chance for someone to win by two. So, second last question. Which international team did Thiago's father, Mazzino, represent? Italy, Spain, Brazil, Colombia. Italy? Brazil. Oh, he's born in Italy. Drink the goes one ahead. <laughs> one ahead with one to go. Last question. How many assists does Thiago have so far in his Anfield career? Three, five, seven, nine. Three. Five. Drink a wins. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five it is. Well five done, is. Hi. Give well me my done. tiara. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I want to get around quickly and uh, get final thoughts from everybody. Uh, I had a recommendation for you, but I can't find it. I'm back on my Scandi uh, Noir uh, bullshit. And there's a currently a, a, a decent show on that I got into on Netflix, which I'm only too into. But I'll have the name for you next week. However, I did just complete a three-part documentary series on Netflix called The Sins of Our Mother. And if you're ever interested in taking a deep dive into what extreme religious beliefs uh, can result in, uh, I think you might uh, find this, in the end, actually quite harrowing documentary, uh, quite interesting. It's a little bit close to the bone for me. So as a result, I found it engaging and and also unsettling. So I I, I think it's I think it's very well made and and an interesting thing, even if they do try to suggest that uh, podcasts are dangerous at one point. (laughs) uh, Big weirdos. Uh, So that's that one. Um, Guy, what have you got to finish us off with this week? Any recommendations or 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 plugs or anything you want to push out there? Well, in, in between watching Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones, I snuck in Brassic Season 4, which is good. It It's very British show, so if you... I wouldn't recommend it for you, Lee Summer, you'd probably feel lost. Um, but it, <laughs> if, you, if you just want some quick comedy, entertaining show, there's four seasons of it. I think there are only about eight to ten episodes a season, but it's a really good show. I think I've recommended it before when other seasons were out on here but yeah season four just came out and it's got michelle keegan in so yeah very good that is very good in and of itself yes is dominic west still in it he is he is he's he's quite funny really yeah really okay okay that's that yes yeah. okay two good points there for sure so that's brassic uh sins of our mother and lisa marie i don't think it's a wreck necessarily you have as a final thought What what is it 
Do you know what happened a year ago this week? Uh, a year ago this week. We saw uh, Tiago, didn't we? If that's what you reckon, Gerda. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was your first AIP. It was. Oh. A year ago, you took a chance to include an American voice, a female with a hint of the melodic South. <laughs> You've, tolerate, you've tolerated me saying soccer instead of football. You've furthered my education on the game and, and Liverpool Football Club in general. And, you know, you've also provided me a lot of hashtag fun, hashtag joy. So <laughs> it's our Tiago, one year anniversary. <laughs> Tiago's signing is now second in that, in that second. anniversary. That's right. <laughs> it's bumped right back. Yes. Uh, it was two years for friends. him, one year for me. Oh. He's injured yeah, all yeah. the time anyway. It's Apparently a great week. That's all I have to say. It's just a good week, but no. Yes, it's been a year since I joined the podcast, and it's still as much fun as when I started. So thanks for that. Well, do you know, as Guy as Guy has alluded to, uh, apart from all the wonderful, um, uh, obvious things which you add to the show, you are, unlike our midfielders, constantly available and robust <laughs> which I, which, which I very, very much appreciate, considering the fact that it's much harder for you to be those things than it is for uh, us snobheads who just sort of walk in five minutes uh, after work and, and sit down in front of a microphone. Um, you're in the middle of your working day, so I do appreciate it immensely, and that's great. It's been, a, it's been a fantastic year, and I think everybody who has uh, expressed an opinion to me. Uh, has been very delighted by your addition to it. So that's great. That's a nice. That's a nice little milestone for us to end this episode on. Episode three hundred and something. I think it's forty. At least forty. Three hundred and forty. Yeah. My first episode was two hundred and ninety nine. So there you go. Okay, right there mm-hmm. in and of itself. Oh, so that means right. So in a calendar year, we've done forty one episodes. Pretty good. Pull your finger uh, out. I guess. Gosh, it's not even fifty two. <laughs> I was going to say, that's not great, is it, lads? <laughs> well, I think it's more consistent than you had been in previous years, though, right? In the previous year. But, uh, but, but before that, we were... Oh, before sort of, that, okay. Yeah, I blame Cam. It's sure. Cam's fault. Yeah, let's just... Yeah, let's yeah. just... Uh, poor Cam. Cam's not here, so it's yeah. easy to blame Cam. Let's, <laughs> let's do that. Uh, right, well, look, that was Lisa Marie Hanahan. That was Guy Drinkle. I've been Trev Downey. This is the Anfield Index podcast. And we will, uh, contrary to statistics be back with you next week we hope you enjoyed listening to this anfield index show please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically there's nothing quite like fan engagement and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show the best way to get in touch is over on our free discord community where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest lfc topics 24 7 sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.